All right, good evening and welcome to the Wasika Public School, school regular school board meeting for Thursday, March 18th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. We are in the Wasika Junior Senior High Performing Arts Center and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, can I get a motion to approve tonight's agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. First and a second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. And we will recognize visitors. We have a few on our agenda who are scheduled to talk, but do we have, did we get any emails for um, comments or anything? All right. And I, I don't think there's anyone here other than those scheduled who wishes to talk. So, all right. Then we will begin with um, Brooke McGuire here to talk about the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee. <coughs> Hi, thanks for your time. Is this on? I think Good. so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I am, uh, like Julie said, here to talk about the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee. Um, at e and each year we submit, just like every school submits, demographic data. And if our numbers reach 10 or over for our American Indian student population, then we're tasked with forming a committee. So we. Um, Last year we did report those numbers, so this year we've started to form a committee. Um, and um, it, we're looking at it as an opportunity to, to just continue our equity work and look at ensuring that everything that we're providing to students um, meets their needs. So we have worked the best we can this year in this situation to kind of form that committee of everyone that I contacted, about half of them agreed to participate, so right now we have four parents who are willing to participate, um, secondary students also can, so we'll just look to, to expand that a little bit. And then we just meet, and I'll provide them with information like what curricular offerings we have, um, assessment data, and looking at different student groups and how they perform. And then they just provide feedback of areas that we could potentially improve at or different experiences we could ex expose all of our students to. So we haven't met in person. This year it's been communication via phone and email and Google Meets um, and just sharing information with them for the most part. Um, it's been the best we can do for this year. And then again, just looking to kind of expand that with in-person meetings where it's more of an interactive process where we can really get feedback from them um, and just use it as an opportunity to do that and ensure everything that we're providing is as equitable as possible for those students. So we also have Lisa Starkweather as one of our members um, for the committee. One of our jobs, in addition to meeting and going through that whole process, is then they vote. And they either concur that the educational offerings meet the needs of American Indian students, or they vote, or they do not concur. And then, in which case, they would provide a list of recommendations for improvement. So um, Lisa will present that vote. That's also one of our expectations is to present that information to the school board. Okay. All right, and Lisa, you're the committee. Up. Oh, great. The committee agrees with the educational offerings of the district for Thank the American you. Indian Parent Advisory Committee. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Lisa. So that's all we have, yep. unless you have any questions for us, or if Lisa, you wanted to add anything else. Okay. All right. So is this, is this the first time the district has had to form this committee? It is. Okay. Our, our population has been, you know, increasing in recent years of all students of color, particularly American Indian students. And so this was the first year that the Department of Education uh, gave us the, the information that it's time to proceed down this route. And as um, Brooke mentioned, we're looking at this as an opportunity to work with our parents and mm -hmm. work with our community to continue to make sure we're serving all of our students. And so um, as recommendations come, um, from that group, we'll continue to keep the board abreast of those discussions and uh, keep doing what we do to make sure we're improving for our kids. Awesome. Well, any other questions for Brooke or Elisa? Okay. 
Thank you both awesome. for being here and for your work on the committee. So. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right, so next we're gonna hear from some junior, senior high students who are presenting on um, their desire to add a Waseca Public School Clay Target League team or club. So please come on up. I am Jason Eustace, and I currently am a senior at Waseca High School, and I am here to discuss about joining or adding a trap team because I have been shooting for New Richland for five years. I'm Walker Krampitz. I'm a junior in Waseca High School. I've been shooting on the New Richland trap team for four years now, too. So. We are here today to ask for your support to start a Waseca trap team. Many people know about our very little, or many people know very little about our safe and growing sport. Here's a short video clip, if we got it up. In most sports, Young athletes spend years honing skills that they'll never use when they're older. But one sport provides a gateway to a lifetime of enjoyment and expertise, shooting sports. And since 2001, the USA High School Clay Target League and its state affiliates have been bringing the excitement of Olympic shooting sports to young people in area schools. The league is open to boys and girls in grades six through 12 who've earned their firearm safety certification. Practices and competitions are held weekly at a local gun club under the supervision of trained coaches and volunteers. At each event, every athlete participates equally, taking the same number of shots, regardless of skill level. <laughs> Scores are submitted by coaches through the league's team management system, compared against conference opponents, and posted on the league's website. The season concludes with the state tournament, where every team is invited to compete for awards and recognition. Students love the league because of the competition and camaraderie, Parents love it because it's affordable and so safe. In fact, since the league began, there hasn't been a single injury to athletes or spectators, making clay target shooting the safest high school sport in the country. And with the nationwide membership in the thousands, it's also the fastest growing. So get on board. We're targeting you to join us at usaclaytarget.com. We'd like to provide Waseca High School students with the same opportunities as other high schools, such as Janesville, Otana. Waseca students are currently, uh, let's see, Waseca students can currently be a part of other town trap teams, but traveling time and expenses limit the levels, or limit our precipitation level and it, the safety behind driving so far, because we shoot at New Richland, so we have to drive to Hope every day, the safety aspect of driving down there. Um, we can provide you with any more questions if you have any, or, um, and yeah, it's just an awesome lifelong sport you can do for the rest of your life, so, yeah. So. Thank you for considering. We appreciate you listening. So do you know how many kids in Wasika area would um, be interested in joining that are currently maybe going out to New Richland or Janesville? We know of 15 right now, but okay. I've also talked to other students that said they'd join if Wasika started one. Right, okay. Boys, what season do typically do, do you participate in? Uh, it's. A spring league, which is competition, and we also do in a fall league, which is practice. We just compete against each other's. Okay. Great. I believe there's a deadline for this for this spring, correct? Yeah, we have we missed the deadline, so it'd be next next season. Next season. Next season. Okay. Um, I'd kind of like to know what Mr. Hedivar thinks about this. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I got it. All right. Um, honestly, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this. Any chance or opportunity that we can give to our students, especially students who maybe don't have other opportunities in, in clubs or sports here, uh, I'm a huge fan of. And that's what we're here for is to give everybody in our school and our district a chance. And the fact that our kids have to go and, and shoot for New Richland and, you know, he's wearing his New Richland Panthers clay target team shirt today just kind of as a illustrating point but the fact that we could have another uh club or an athletic team that would be wearing the blue and gold and representing our town would definitely be something that i'm in support of uh we've we've had some movement on this in the past we've we've tried we've never got to this phase um because a lot of our our kids were maybe not big fans of shooting at the wasika club uh, these guys this year are definitely in support of that and that was one of the things we wanted to do to make sure that we were having a, a team is that they were going to stay in town and participate in this uh, activity inside of town. So um, we've got some support behind that now. So I think it's time to move forward. And that's why we're at this phase right now. Do we need to be worried about girls and guys or how does that work at this point? So, you know, really, I come into this under the realm of athletics and activities. We don't need to be worried about that. We have okay. young ladies. Um, that are interested in shooting. Do you have any that are currently shooting at New Richland right now? There, there is three. They're saying a couple, three or four, and someone might be sitting up on stage that may be rumored uh, <laughs> being interested in it. <laughs> you want to you wanna say it? He said they're some of the better shooters on the team, <laughs> the young ladies that are interested. So um, I, I don't think we, we need to be worried about that. This is an opportunity for both boys and girls. It is sponsored by the Minnesota State High School League. It is not an official Minnesota State High School League activity, mm -hmm. uh, but they do have a state tournament at the end that is sponsored by the league. So it's kind of a, a cooperating partnership that they have. Okay. So we, for our realm, basically it would fall under the activities okay. section more than the athletics section, but I'm obviously uh, in support of this. Okay. Any chance to give these kids another opportunity is something I'm mm -hmm. a huge fan of. Well, I think when it was just, if it's just a handful of students, I think it makes sense to co-op with another school. But when you're talking 15 plus, then I, yeah, I can see making it, making the change this way. Janesville uses our trip, our range at here in Wasika. Oh, really? Okay. Right now they actually have, I reached out when I saw our agenda, mm -hmm. and they have 70 plus kids on the Janesville, and I'm sure some of those are Wasika students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is a, it's a very, it's, it's, uh, definitely a growing sport too. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be perfectly honest since we're not the managing school, it, it's really tough to manage if our kids are shooting in New Richland or if they're shooting in Janesville. Um, and it actually kind of boggled my mind that we have kids participating on two teams. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it seems kind of interesting and I wonder how that works exactly, but this would be a chance and an opportunity for us to be able to bring them all under one realm and, and all shoot together. Is there any fees that we would incur with this? Uh, there possibly could be. I would have to take a look at it. Okay. Um, the only thing I would think of would be a small, maybe athletic fee like we have for all of our other sports and activities with the Minnesota State High School League. I'm not really entirely sure how that works since they are a, a cooperating partner in this event. Um, there would also probably be some small fees for registration and things like that. Uh, we did talk a little bit about it. Do you guys want to talk about what you pay for fees yeah. at New Richland a little bit and what you pay for them? So our mom, well, my mom pays for us, and uh, she she spends a hundred dollars total. That I think it's sixty bucks goes to the state, and thirty goes to New Richland for letting us use a trap range. We buy our own shells, buy our own gun, and everything like that. Okay. So I think, Mr. Hedovar, if the as I've experienced these types of proposals in the past, the next step then is, is if the board was, is interested in us having some more conversation, yeah. I could work with Mr. Hedovar and you know the young men and ladies on the team and put together a more formal proposal for the board to consider in the coming weeks. Oh, well, that'd be awesome. Awesome. Okay. I think yeah. it's an awesome idea. Yeah, we don't have much else going on right now, so we can get on <laughs> that. Just throw plate. Yeah, but that's real work, though. That's the work we want to be doing. <laughs> but it, it sounds like this doesn't need to be rushed, since you guys are already in your season. No, and, so. and, and these two young men, they know that. They're already planning on shooting for New Richland okay. this year. Um, our plan would be to start in the fall with a practice-only okay. season, get the club up and running, uh, get everybody on board, get the kids on board here in Waseca, and then start the plans for next spring where we would then uh, enter the competitive season. All right. 
Well, then I think we can leave it to you to pick the right time to bring it to the board and Absolutely. for approval. And so if, if, that's, if that's summer, that's fine. If it's later this spring, that's fine. So, uh, yeah. Knowing uh, these two young men and their academic standing, we'll probably be talking to you sometime in May. Sounds good. <laughs> Hat, hats off to you guys for doing that. You're seniors and won't be here to enjoy it next year, but you're still advocating for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So. And, and he, knew, he knew that, and he's, he's well aware, but this is something he's passionate about yep. and uh, something he wants to get up and going. So, nice. and, and we wanted to make this a learning opportunity for these two young men. Yep. And uh, they were a little terrified, but they got it done. Thank you for coming. Good job. Good job. You guys did great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the time. Hey, Joe, one more question. Is there a coach or an advisor for this, or how well, does that Well, that was work? one of the things we kind of started to go down and, and take a look, and Mr. Nelson did some recruiting. Is it confirmed that we have someone interested? We're just waiting for, we didn't want to put the cart in front of the horse. We're yep. just seeing if there's interest and traction from the school board, yeah. and it appears that there is, mm -hmm. yeah. so then we would have those details laid out in our next discussion. Nice. Great. There are specific rules. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a 10 to 1. So there has to be a one coach for every 10 kids. So. Yep. And, and we, we do have interest in, co in coaching. There are people that, that would be interested in stepping up and helping out. Um, obviously, we'd have to take a look at some of the budgetary things with that and make a decision based on that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is definitely interest there. Good. I think you have support. We're, we're anxious to hear the next, the next phase. So yeah. Great. Right. Uh, we'll put something together and hopefully we'll be talking again in May. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for Thank coming. You. All right. Um, our last item on the um, open forum would be just an update report on the band choir trip. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, good evening. And what we wanted to just share with you briefly, we didn't want to take up too much of the school board's time this evening, but as you're aware, this last summer we did approve our band and choir trip uh, to go on a, a joint trip to Washington, D.C. to perform in a parade, um, and that um, has been canceled by the, the, I think the parade itself is canceled and they're not gonna happen that, have that trip. So our, our music uh, instructors have been working with families in the administration here at the high school, and they are planning on adjusting that trip to go to Branson, uh, Missouri here, uh, same time, same uh, organizations working together, band and choir, and uh, all of the student deposits and everything are gonna be rolled over, so it continues to be um, an opportunity for kids to uh, take a trip here for their music uh, opportunity here this school year. Um, Megan, anything else I'm missing that you are aware of right now for that? Um, there seems to be a lot of opportunities for both band and choir, because um, the Washington one had a parade Mm -hmm. But this one looks like it's going to have some other opportunities and maybe even more spread out throughout the week. So, good. It's yeah. exciting. So we're just we want to inform the board of that adjustment and our community, anybody who might be watching, that we are still working hard to make sure we have that opportunity for our students this year, yep. even though the previous plan is adjusting like everything else this year. And what were the dates again for this trip? It's over the Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Right. This might actually be really interesting going down to Branson with all the music. Yeah. So that'll be cool. So that is on um, our agenda later to officially approve that those changes. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then um, I didn't mean to mention this earlier, but again, anyone watching from home, feel free to send um, uh, anyone on the board an email at any time if you have questions, but you can uh, formally send us an email at wasikadistrict at gmail.com and we can certainly read your comment um, at a future board meeting, so. All right, um, moving on then, can I get a motion? Oh, I guess, uh, Adida, yes, you reviewed the claims for February. Would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I would like to make a mo motion to recommend action of, of payment for the claims for February 2021 account payable of the amount of $1,340,030.91, including dental, and payroll, $829,330.66. Right. Thank you. I have a second. First and a second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? So move. Second. second. <laughs> uh, first and a second. Uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries unanimous. All right, uh, we will then move on to our information items. So we have an update from our superintendent on learning model and strategic plan. Thank you. Um, tonight I'm gonna present two ideas, as you mentioned, Chair Anderson, the, a, a brief update about our learning model, uh, which is primarily about thinking forward at this point, um, discussing how we're doing this spring, but then also talking about the summer and the fall. Uh, and then I will give a, a brief update of where we are with our strategic plan work after that. So looking forward to the, the conversation here. So as we move into the rest of spring 2021, so we're in our, our final trimester of this school year now, um, we are really into our rhythm with our students coming every day, um, Tuesday through Friday, um, being in their classrooms with their peers and their teachers, and really starting to settle into um, our sports teams are being able to successfully work through what they need to without having students you know, miss a lot of courses or getting sick. Um, we're seeming to have our staff regularly attending. They're all doing a great job, and, and many of them have been vaccinated. Many of them received their second shot last week, and so we're moving through that process as well. Um, so as we move through the rest of the spring of 2021, really our learning model we're hoping to maintain like we are for the remainder of this school year. Um, there's a couple things just to keep in mind. I mean, even last week we had a handful of um, just just five student cases that we had to work through, and that, that put about 70 students on quarantine, uh, mostly K-6 kids that happened to be in this particular instance. Uh, and so maintaining that Monday distance learning practice continues to be important for those younger learners, as well as um, our teachers continuing with that preparation, working through those, those um, students there. At a secondary level, we still have students who are only in the distance learning model and our teachers are teaching them well synchronously with their regular classes and so based on the executive order um, we still do need to offer them 30 minutes a day two and a half hours a, a week of extra prep in addition to their contracted prep and so mondays provide that for us as well so right now our feedback from our staff is that that has really helped make this year a success and so i don't anticipate changing that for this school year hopefully we can maintain that um, I did some calendar work here this week, and of, of the Mondays that were scheduled to be in session, if you can believe it, you're going to gulp here. There's nine left. <laughs> That's it. So we're getting close already <laughs> to uh, summertime 2021. And so um, we'll be watching uh, how students' results come in here in the next several weeks for the assessments we have coming up for the spring of 2021. But right now, we are settling into a rhythm. Right now, as of today, we don't have any active cases of students or staff, um, and we're just continuing to maintain this. As we're, we're hearing regionally about sports teams and activities and students being out for many different reasons, we right now continue to manage that with our staff and students. They're doing a great job. And um, I commend everybody for really doing what they need to do to get through the rest of this school year, hopefully, in this model. So I'm feeling good about where we are with that. Um, Summer 2021 is going to be an exciting opportunity for us to provide chances for students to either can pick up or some opportunities where they did not meet the standards during the regular school year, and in some cases even be enriched. And so um, our principals are working very carefully right now, actually with, with Brooke McGuire and myself, getting planned for the summer as we figure out which students need summer programming. Um, beginning the 30th of, of March, so coming up here in the next week and a half, um, after school programming, Targeted Services gets back up at Hartley and, and at WIS to be able to get two or three days a week where students are after school, working through some of the things they need to work on. Um, so we're working through those assessments this spring, our MCAs, our FASTs, our NWEAs, and then teacher recommendations for who we're going to re recommend for summer programming but then also have some opportunities for students that might just want some of that summer programming as well. At the junior high level, um, it'll be a lot of cross-curricular experiential opportunities for students. Um, seventh and eighth graders working based on academic performance um, with primary focus being on reading and math, you know, and then of course secondary focus on science and social studies. Um, we will have a specific summer program late in the summer for students entering seventh grade and then students entering kindergarten too, I should have mentioned that with elementary as well for that. Um, at the high school level, it will be more about credit recovery and more about students who may need to, um, to pick up some work. As you remember, maybe from our last workshop, Jake Hager was here talking about standards-based summer programming, not repeating a course, but repeating the things you didn't learn. And once you've learned those things, let's move on to the next opportunity, really becoming personalized with our learning this summer. And um, as 
Dr. Miller and Mr. Hager were talking about how that works at the high school, really almost doing a satellite program like we do at the ALC over at, at this building, so we can really extend those numbers for that. So I feel like we are preparing ourselves a very comprehensive summer programming. I'm not convinced that our student learning is going to demonstrate an, a huge, tremendous need for it, but that's what our assessments are for, to find out what we have going on right now. And that's where our staff and students are working over the next few weeks to figure that out. And then finally, we think about, for this topic, I think about the fall of 2021. Um, I, heard, I was watching a, um, a legislative committee session on Tuesday night, and I think it was, I don't remember which senator it was, who made a comment, why are we worrying about summer? It's only March. What are they, what are they in such a hurry for? And I wanted to say, well, we're thinking about the fall, actually. Summer's, <laughs> summer's in the river mirror by now. But uh, so what I, what I think our community um, and our school board, I, I would like to present as kind of some reassurance that we're looking at a relatively normal fall. So we're looking at the traditional calendar, if you will, with, you know, five-day week moving through our, our courses, through our classrooms. Um, we are working hard, though, on thinking about what can we capture from this year to bring into next year. And we have found extensive value in teacher collaboration and professional development mm -hmm. and being able to have those Mondays to be able to plan. And so just today I was working with um, Mr. Hutmeyer and Mr. O'Brien about, you know, What's a, what does the calendar look like where maybe one, I say one and a half, because maybe it's 12 days over the course of the calendar, um, we do distance learning days. So it may be one, or one day a month in some months, two in some months, so that we have the opportunity to capture some of that good collaborative work that we're doing, but we know it's probably not reasonable to do that every week. Um, the caveat with that that we have to remember, though, is that legislatively right now, the statute says that you have to, it has to be weather-related to do those e-learning days. Um, if, so if the executive order that currently is up saying you can do it, you have to do distance learning, if that expires with no legislative action to change that, we may not have that option. Right. We may just have to provide what we have and then work with the students that we need to who might continue to need distance learning, however we need to do that. My hope is that we, we get some flexibility so that we can do that for our families and for our, our teachers and, and kids um, because what they're accomplishing with those modulized learning um, in their current model is nothing short of <laughs> advanced compared to where we, I remember sitting here with you all right about this time last spring talking about personalized learning and the goal of the district. And this school year has, fast, has, has hastened that pace of our personalized learning instruction. And so we're looking at gathering some of that in the fall as well. But it will look more what people are used to the calendar looking like for the most part. Um, our goal is to bring to you in April or May um, that idea, it depends on where the legislature, legislature is at, so that we can do, if you recall last, I think it was August, we did a calendar update for this particular year based on some student days we removed, so some planning time for teachers. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to do that in, in April or May here for next year so that we give our families the summer to, and I don't expect um, anything significant to change. Uh, commencement's not gonna change. Things like that aren't gonna change. But if we add things like a distance learning day, we wanna have that out for families as soon as we can for that. So other than that, when I think about the spring of 2021, um, we're planning for what prom will look like. We're planning for what graduation will look like. We're planning for, um, hopefully we have some teams going quite a ways in the postseason here in the next few weeks. Um, I'm feeling really um, like a school year is, is wrapping up. So that's, uh, that's positive when you think of it that way. So, and that's, that's the learning model update. I, I would stop, pause for any questions you have about those types of topics before I move on. So just clarifying, so for the remainder of the school year, the plan is four days a week with Mondays as our distance learning day. That is our current plan, yes. I mean, I think, unless, and unless heaven forbid we have some sort of outbreak or something right. changes, we have to go the opposite direction. That's, that's the goal yep. right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think we have just enough cases and quarantines and, and things like that that I would be hesitant to, to change that right now with the rhythm that we have. Yep. Yeah. Good. Any other questions about the learning model update portion of this? So, okay, so strategic planning is, again, as, as I've talked with several of you over the last week or two, um, this, gets, this is exciting work to me. When you think about the next few 
few years will look like for our district. So as you know, our current strategic plan goes through 2024. So we have three more years of strategic planning after of this current strategic plan. And so what I'm working on right now with our with our um, district administration is putting together an operational plan, a work plan for the next three years. So we have the opportunity to really get down on paper. Our objective is to advance our areas in teaching and learning. What does that mean we're doing? And what are we gonna do this year? What are we gonna do next year? What are we gonna do the year after that? And right now, uh, what we're doing is gathering the information as a team of all the things we are doing, because we don't have to invent anything. We're doing the work. We were doing the work. But what we, we need to get, I think, an area we could improve on is how we demonstrate that and show that in a collective, comprehensive place where it becomes a living document. So I'm working with our team on that, and I look forward to, in June, bringing that to you uh, to be able to look at what the next three years could look like based on our strategic plan. And what are we learning about? And what are we currently implement, implementing, but not all the way there yet? And what is just standard? We're just doing it. We know this is what we do. It's great. And, and I, the conversation that I think is sometimes hard for folks is, what's leaving the system? <laughs> what, what, what do we need to remember? This isn't coming back. Mm -hmm. and, and there's some things that probably are going to end up that way as we get through this the rest of our, our school year. Specifically, though, I want to do want to highlight three areas of our strategic plan. And the first is student achievement. So as I talk with principals just this week, I had some meetings with, with all of our principals about how are the kids doing? How are we doing academically? What are we getting through? And I think the, um, what we're finding is that if you base it on the textbook and where we've gotten to the textbook, most of our teachers are saying I'm at the same place in the textbook as I normally would be this time of the year. Now, have I taught everything in, this, in the particular year? Um, most of them are saying, yes, I taught it, but did I focus on some different things? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think we can deny the fact that some things probably got more attention than others this particular year. So we're really looking forward to our upcoming assessments in the next few weeks to determine what did we get to kids and what didn't we get to kids? Um, our, our NWAs, we're finished with those at WIS with showing some really strong results there. Our FAST results at Hartley are showing um, good results. We had less kids um, unsuccessful at our junior, senior high in the second trimester than we did the first trimester. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Miller will be getting us that data that I can share in our next update because um, be because of vaccinations, we extended the grade deadline and went extra weeks and so many, many of our staff were struggling last Friday. <laughs> we went an extra week for that to go. So grades are actually due this week for, for our junior, senior high. And we'll know what second trimester looks like. Uh, for those of you who are involved in the, the DAC committee, the District Accountability Advisory Committee, I think is what that is. Sure. I get the, all the acronym right. Um, we'll be meeting in April, and we'll be having a more detailed update on our academic achievement this year that we can bring back to the full board after that. Um, in our workforce area, you know, as you know, we're in staffing season right now, thinking about what we've got going on for next year. Um, mm -hmm. we, are, we do know, based on our our budget, and, and Elizabeth will share that with you here in a few months when she gets to her budget conversation that, you know, we have spent in our fund balance strategically the last couple of years, and so we do need to adjust our budget somewhat going forward. Um, the, the exciting opportunity we have is that we can do some of that through attrition, but also the, the federal money that we were able to receive, um, you know, the ESSER 1, ESSER 2 dollars, is going to potentially allow us to spread that over a matter of a few years so we don't feel, we're not in reduction mode. We're not in a mode where we have to eliminate anything that would impact programming to the point where we would say, oof, I don't want to go that direction. There might be some ways we can get more efficient, mm -hmm. absolutely, but I don't think it's going to be... Um, felt quite as, as significantly as some years, and ESSER money helps us with that. But we are in staffing process right now, working through that. Um, I think I mentioned in the update yesterday, our, we're in the process next week now, beginning our interviews for our food service director, who will replace Jason Forshee in July. Um, the first round was, was scheduled to be this Monday, and then this Monday happened, and we had, um, <laughs> that was quite the, we, we, you know, I, and I, I typically, and Elizabeth and I were texting, I don't know, whatever time it was that morning, and we don't typically like to, reschedule something like that, but it was a pretty pretty significant storm that day. So we'll be taking that on again next week to work through that. Um, and then of course this summer we have negotiations coming up. So we start thinking about what we can do to support our staff um, into the next couple of years, wanting to make sure that we, we have we have exceptional staff and we'll seek a public schools. So we wanna make sure we support them and take care of them um, at the same time being fiscally responsible with what we have to work with. And so um, in preliminary conversations just in passing with, with our groups, 
everyone understands that. I look, I look forward to that process mm -hmm. moving forward. This legislative session involves some, some um, potentially some, I don't know the word I'm looking for, open-ended things that really could impact that. So we probably won't get into those conversations until midsummer. Um, at, at the earliest. We really want to see what's happening with the legislation because there could be so many things that could impact our negotiations for our staff. Uh, and the last thing I would want to um, emphasize here on our strategic plan is that in the area of teaching and learning, um, there's quite a bit of um, discussion happening and I know some of us have also had those conversations about um, Department of Education and the legislature really mandating what students have to take. Um, to graduate, whether it's the civics course in 11th or 12th grade, you've got social study standards that appear to be incomplete that have been, you know, they're in draft form, but they're missing some significant things. And, and as we've asked those questions, we've been responded with, oh yeah, they'll get, they'll get in there. They're not done yet. Don't worry about it. Um, many of our legislators, I think, are planning on just working with MDE to extend all standard changes into, into future years, because right now isn't the time to be making big curricular changes over this summer. Um, I do worry a little bit about some of the requirements that are coming down, the um, with adding a PE requirement, adding an algebra requirement, um, meaning the eighth grade algebra doesn't count as like it as currently does. Um, there's some things in there that, that could reduce electives for students and then more elective opportunities for students. And I'm, I'm concerned about that, but I don't know how where that will go. But we're watching that, um, working very carefully. And of course, any curricular changes or any programming changes that we would present based on a response to a standards change, uh, the board would be part of that conversation if we were to make any significant changes there. I don't see anything happening right now with that. Uh, we're watching, again, the legislative session. The governor just put out his revised budget today um, that came out. I had a chance to see it just a little bit before I came over to the board meeting. And um, at least at this stage of the game, it does look like the governor and then the, the, the House has got um, a lot of support placed in the resources for schools. Um, the Senate original budget was significantly lower, which is expected. That's how they will do their work. And then we'll see where they, where they end up here in the next few weeks as they work through that. So the deadline for uh, the first committee, or the, you know, the originating house, the originating body, was last Friday. The other body has to act on them by this Friday. And then next, um, two weeks from now, we'll start seeing some budgetary goals in the legislature. So that's kind of the work we're doing with strategic planning and, and moving through the rest of our school year. All right. Questions for Eric on strategic plan or, or anything he's talked about? All right. Very thorough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Elizabeth, we're ready for your reports. Well, thank you for the opportunity to um, discuss our financial position. And um, I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to, I would like to start with enrollment, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in our packet, we track month enrollment on a monthly basis. And you can see that we did dip down a little bit in March. Um, but one thing I did want to point out is that that trend is not any different than what we've seen in the past two years. So really, even though we, op we are down overall in our student anticipated um, enrollment, it, it is trending just like the the prior two years. So you can see that on the graph um, that that our history for this year mimics very similarly what we've done the past two years. Um, as I mentioned before, we are down from where we had anticipated. So we are using that updated information and that is what we use to build our, our updated budget that we're gonna talk about tonight as well. Regarding expenditures and revenues, um, what you're seeing right now for comparisons would be the final um, 1920 budget compared to the preliminary 2021 budget. So the, the documents that are already located in the board agenda um, is our preliminary budget. So until the board actually approves our final budget, those numbers wouldn't be included in that, that, that information. So I did want to point that out right now. Um, after the board approves our budget tonight, those updated numbers then would be used moving forward when we're doing our comparisons. So when you do see some of those swings, um, and we've talked about those over the, the course of the year, again, we're using our preliminary budget that we had set back in June for a July 1 date. So if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do then is actually transition into um, 
how we built our, our final 2021 budget and just talk a little bit and go into further detail so you feel prepared um, when we get to that action item at the um, later on in the evening. So if it's okay, I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully you can see it. So just one moment, please. And it's still maybe small, so I do apologize. Are you able to share to see my screen at this moment? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so what I'd like to do is discuss um, some of the different changes that went into building our final budget for 2021. Um, so Another thing I also wanted to, to do was let you know is once, once our budgets are approved, we put everything out on our website. So there's a lot of information out there available to our community members, our staff members. Um, we wanna be as transparent as we possibly can and give um, individuals the opportunity to see all the different tools and um, information regarding our district. So I put a snapshot of our website here. So if you are ever interested, if you go to wasika.k12.mn.us, that's our homepage. And if you go to departments and then district office and business finance, you, I tried to highlight it here. You can see district budget um, and again, it's just a screenshot. So 2021, but if you saw the whole page, our budget actually that we have posted out there, I believe goes back to 2020 or excuse me, 2010. So we have multiple years of information out there. And when you click on that district budget for 2021, what you're gonna see right now would be our preliminary budget that we approved. So in June, we bring a budget to the board for our July 1 start date. So the preliminary budget is already posted there. We, um, in November, we are required to post information on our prior year budget, as well as our current year budget and anticipated fund balances. So that would be out there. Um, and that's posted in Waseca County News in November. And then we also post that on our website. And then after our meeting where we approve our final budget, we'll go ahead and add that as well. So again, you've got a lot of history there if you ever have questions on um, a, a budget narrative. And, and the way that we post that is it's not just some of the information that you're gonna see this evening. There's a lot of narrative behind it. We try to create the story of of all the different changes that go into the budget, a little bit more about Waseca Public Schools. Our, it creates our history. Um, we try to also offer graphs and just a little bit more interaction. So um, we just know that people digest information in different ways. So we try to do that and accommodate that in basically our budget book. So I just wanted to point that out that there's a lot of information out on our website. So please feel free to check that out at, at any time. All right, so this is a snapshot of our just our general fund budget. So I wanted to go over this a little bit more in detail. We did discuss this with our finance committee last Thursday. So they've also seen this. There wasn't any change from that point in time and there hasn't been any change from the, the budget that's been posted in the actual agenda. So when we approve a budget for a July 1 start date, there's a lot of unknowns at that point and we're doing our best to anticipate. So the very first thing that we're anticipating is where we think we're going to end that that prior year. So this first column, it, said, it right now it says audited fund balance, but when we start the year, it's unaudited. We have anticipated ending fund balances that we're starting our 2021 year with. Now that we know uh, what our audited fund balances are, that's our opportunity to update that column. So now those are actual numbers that we are dealing with and that we know to start off for this year. We also then take a look at how our revenues may have changed from where we thought they would be to where they are ending. Some of the major changes that we um, entered into our budget for a final budget is, is absolutely driven by our student enrollment. So we had anticipated, as we had talked about before, that we would have about 50 more students than we thought we did at this point in time. So we did reduce our budget based on um, our, our estimate that we're gonna be down in student from where we had anticipated. So that did bring down the budget. Some other things that are playing into would be, um, we were not quite sure at that time what activities would be doing. So we kept a, a, a budget similar to what we had in prior years. This year we did not charge for gate receipts and or activity passes just because of the nature of, of, um, of this year in general. 
So that was one thing that we took out of our final budget that had been included in our preliminary budget. Another thing that we adjusted for revenues was our, were our interest rates. Unfortunately, interest rates are very low right now and we're not seeing the same return um, that we had in prior years. So we, uh, we reduced the amount of interest earned so that was bringing our revenue down. So that's been adjusted in our revenue column. On the expenditure side, um, we actually were able to reduce our expenditure side as well, mainly driven by staffing. So again, when we, we present our budget in June, all of our staffing is not complete at that point. So we're putting in estimates of maybe where we're hiring individuals at, maybe what benefit packages they might be taking. Now we know who our, our staff members are, where they have come in on the salary schedule and what benefits they did take. So we were able to tighten that up and that actually did drop down a little bit. Um, we've also had some open positions, N not necessarily intentionally, um, but again, with the learning models that we've had this year, we haven't always had to fill maybe any positions that had been open, um, maybe an individual had left that position, and so we've paused on hiring for that. So then what we've done with this final budget is tighten that up again to what our true staff count is, which did bring down our expenditure budget. All of those numbers play then into where we are projecting our ending fund balance to be. And again, this is just our general fund right now. This is broken out into a couple of different categories. So I also wanted to discuss that. As you can see, um, the top half is a restricted account. So what that means is the state, it's driven by state and or federal regulation on how we can use those funds. Um, the revenue that we receive can only be sent, spent on certain expenditures. So those are called our restricted funds. The next section is called assigned, and that's more a local decision. So something that we've brought to the board and the board has said, yes, locally, we, we wanna make sure that we're setting these funds aside for specific purposes. And then the one, um, and I'm gonna have to move this just a little bit so you can see that a little better, maybe, maybe not, nope, I'll go right back, um, is, is our unassigned fund balance. And that is what we focus on for a majority of the time, because that is where a majority of our operations occur, and that is where the school board has the most authority to um, discuss operations for the district. So we started the year with just over $7.2 million in our unassigned fund balance, which is just shy of 36% um, of a fund balance. We had anticipated to spend into that fund balance by about a million dollars, and that was a strategically planned down spend. Um, and after all of our different adjustments for the year, we're projected to end the fund balance with just a little over $6 million in the fund balance, which is about 28%. So when I talk about percentages, what that means is that $6 million represents about 28% of our annual expenditures. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So again, that $6 million represents about 28% of our annual expenditures. And our policy 714 really drives um, our whole budgeting process, um, as well as planning, programming, staffing. Our fund balance policy currently states that we'd like to have a range somewhere between 15% and 35%. Couple of different rationales for that. Um, a main one would be for any maybe fluctuations that are outside of the district's control. So maybe state driven, federal driven, a pandemic driven, are we able to withstand any of those maybe outside factors that we don't have any control over? So we wanna make sure that we're trying to stay within that fund balance to continue operations. Another reason that we have that fund balance policy is to try to make sure that we have enough cash flow on hand so we don't have to borrow to meet our cash flow needs. We wanna make sure that we're not borrowing and paying interest on those funds. Uh, we wanna make sure that the interest that maybe we would have paid really goes into programming. We don't wanna spend any funds on interest if we don't have to. Now, sometimes there are absolutely cases that we've, you know, we've had to or any district might have to, but um, we have been um, in a very fortunate position for quite a few years now that we have not had to do any borrowing for cash flow and really been putting the funds where they really need to, to be and that's with programming. So when all is said and done, we did spend into the fund balance about $200,000 more than we had anticipated. Um, but overall, in, in the course of this year, um, I feel like this is still a very, very good spot for Waseca Public Schools. Um, individuals have been doing a fantastic job on um, being innovative, 
um, really making sure that they're being conservative with any expenditures that pr they're proposing. I feel like we're still able to provide um, excellent programming. We haven't, that's always been a goal of ours is what can we do to sustain the program that we currently have in place. And those federal dollars, as Eric had mentioned, have really done a fantastic job of protecting our fund balance and keeping it in operations and not with all of the other things that we've had to do and or invest in the district to deal with the pandemic. So I'm gonna pause for just a moment because I know I apologize, I'm talking quite a bit, but that, that's the general fund in a nutshell. Does anybody have any questions or specific items they'd like me to cover? Could, um, could you just clarify what the, the $308,000 figure is um, in, the, in the fund balance transfers column? Yes, no, that's a great question. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so what I try to do is color code as well so you mm -hmm. can see what, what's happening there. So um, in the restricted column or section, excuse me, there's a, a section called career and technical education. So you can, in the revenue column, we receive about $77,000 of state aid to help offset our career and technical education programming. So that programming includes our, our egg program, um, a lot of our business programs, as our med tech academy program, as well as um, our, our family and consumer science and our, in, and our industrial tech, I apologize if I said that already. So in the column right next to it, you can see we spend about $385,000 on that programming. So then, so the, then the column to the right of that is that 308511 or the number that you're talking about right now Julie, so what that means is the district helps support that programming using its general education aid of $308,000 to support that career and tech program because that is not a fully funded program. Gotcha, thank you, that, that makes sense. I was, it's, 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 whenever you see a big number, I'm always like, what does that mean? And that, that totally makes sense. So. <laughs> no, I appreciate you asking that question. Okay, so if it's okay, I'm gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. um, we have a total of eight funds within the district. So that was just the general fund that we had talked about. Um, these food service, community education, the building construction, debt service, um, trust funds, custodial funds, and the dental fund all make up the expenditures and revenues for Waseca Public Schools. So our overall revenue budget for this year is $29,997,294. Um, dollars for our proposed final revenue budget and our proposed final expenditure budget would be a total of $32,379,449. The other fund I wanted to point out just briefly because there, it's a little bit of a change than, than what we've been used to is our food service fund. So right now our food service fund did begin the year with $376,000 in their fund balance. And as you can see, we're proposing or, or thinking we're going to end the, the year with $195,000 in that fund balance. This is um, nothing to do with the way food service um, is, is, I'll say, spending into their fund balance. This has everything to do with the, way, the delivery of the program this year. So in a normal year, we would run a national school lunch program, and that's all based on state aid reimbursement, federal reimbursement, as well as sales for, for all of the meals, all of cart sales, and that helps offset um, any expenditures in the food service program. This year, there's a lot of different waivers that are available to school districts. And this year, all students are considered free. So instead of having to, to complete free and reduced applications, the federal government has said, nope, we are going to allow you to serve free meals to every single student, regardless if they actually qualify as a free and reduced status. So the program that we're actually running this year because of that premise is the summer food service program where all students receive free meals. So instead of just running it in the summer, we're allowed to run that year round. So that is 100% federally funded. Um, so we are receiving federal reimbursement for that. Unfortunately, our expenditures don't decrease. We still have to run the same type of programming and we're not able to cut expenditures but our participation rates um, are lower this year just because again of the way that we've um, delivered services sometimes in, sometimes out. We've still offered as many meals as we possibly can, but not everybody accepts 
the meals, especially on distance learning days, um, or um, again, when we've been in hybrid, just participation is down overall. So unfortunately our expenditures didn't decrease, but it, the revenue isn't there to back it this year. So I just wanted to let you know, this is nothing that, um, food service has been doing a fantastic job provide, providing service this year, but I did want to, to help you understand why we will be spending into the fund balance and it's just because of the nature of the programming for this year. Okay. Um, a board member had brought up a great question. There are two items on the school board agenda later that we're asking the board to approve transfers from the general fund to the community education fund, mm -hmm. one for school age care, as well as for the performing arts center. Those are already included in the budget proposal. Um, so if for some reason the board would not want to pursue that, those would change, but I just wanted to let you know those are included in our budget proposal already. Um, this is, again, just another way, as I said before, we would just want to show the breakdown of how our, our budget is created. So 82% on the expenditure side is, uh, is comprised of our general fund. Very similar um, story on the revenue side. Um, so you can kind of see how our budget is, is comprised. And then the very last one I wanted to show you is just what our unassigned fund balance has done. So I said before, our range is that um, 15 to 35%, and those are the two red lines that are on this, um, this spreadsheet. The blue bars are the percentages, and so that's, we want those blue bars in between the red lines. That, that's our goal for our fund balance is that 15 to 35%. As I had said before, right now we're projecting with this current budget and at 28%. Um, and as Eric had mentioned before, we are, we are in a very, very nice spot. We are, are going to continue to monitor our expenditures. We use this information then to help create our, our future programming. Um, we use this information in a five-year projection as well as, as what do we need to do to make those natural um, attrition choices to help balance out our expenditures and revenues because we know that we can't continue to spend a million dollars into our fund balance, but how do we balance that out um, while maintaining or trying to do our best to stay within those two red lines of the 15 to 35%. Any other questions that you might have regarding our budget? Looks really thorough. I'm glad you deal with all those numbers and not me. So. <laughs> well, and I do, um, encourage anyone if anybody ever has questions at any time i'm happy to to discuss this further again that's why we also try to create that narrative piece to create a story behind where those numbers are just so, you, so it just isn't numbers there's information behind why we're doing what we're doing and and the rationale between behind decisions that that we're making as a district but um if, if you don't have anything else i do appreciate your time this evening and, and let me know if you have any further questions all right we all good Mm -hmm. okay, thank you, Elizabeth. All right, uh, we will move on to our committee and board member reports. Um, Grant, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, I was involved in three committees, uh, but I'll talk about two of them. Uh, we met with the finance committee, went over a lot of the same stuff that Elizabeth just went over, so I won't get into any of those details. We talked about some opportunities for possible uh, further federal funding and what that can do for us and how do we best utilize that. So. That's kind of exciting. Um, I think there might be some good opportunities there, and I, I guess gave us a chance to ask Elizabeth and Eric a lot of these questions, and from my standpoint on it, I think they're doing a fabulous job on what they present it. It's very organized. Mm -hmm. I think they're looking very well at future. How do we set ourselves up to be, you know, responsible and stable and solid, and I compliment both of them on all that work. Um, legislative committee, we also, I met with that. Um, we reviewed, uh, Eric and his group has kind of put together a legislative statement of somewhat a little bit where we stand on some things, which I think will help uh, us as a board, us as a community be consistent and, and always pushing for a consistent message, which I think will be good. Um, you covered some of the other things as far as what legislative is happening. There's a, 
I'm learning that there's a lot of details that they decide that can really impact us. And it's interesting to watch that here's a proposal and then it may change. It's a very fluid dynamic thing. So it's something to spend some time and keep watch on and see what we can do to influence that. That's my report. All right, thank you. Adida. Oh, we had a superintendent evaluation committee meeting and we just went through updates from Eric, all, all the you know areas that he's working on and it was great presentation from Eric as usual. And now I think uh, we will be meeting maybe later to just discuss how we are going to deliver the evaluation for Eric in, it should be done like in June. Yeah time frame. I mean, it was a very, very good meeting. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Um, I really don't have too much other than um, we did, a policy committee did meet and we did review um, a number of policies. <coughs> um, nothing, I guess, really out of the ordinary there too much. Um, mm -hmm. So, right. that's it for me. <laughs> um, well, we had had personnel after our last meeting and again just kind of reviewed some ideas for staffing next year and align, aligning our staffing needs with our budget stabilization kind of plan, like just really basically what kind of Elizabeth just described um, and then also um, the food service director position, so I'm excited to hear about how the interviews go for that. Um, and then I completed the MSBA seminar for, the, for negotiations, which is always enlightening, um, but reviewing ULA, ULA language, um, reviewing master agreement language, um, and then um, the idea of how to cost out proposals and that kind of stuff. But um, ahead of negotiations, regardless of if you're on the committee, it's not a bad idea to go online and review the contracts that we had from <coughs> previous years. And, um, and pretty much everything's online except for the individual contracts. Is that right, mm -hmm. Elizabeth? Yep. Yeah, or anyone, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, so whoever, I mean, I'm certainly on that committee, so I'll, I'll be doing that, but um, anyone else is welcome to do that as well. Um, is it on our road, like a website or? Yeah, it's on the Wasika, the, okay. the school website, so. Um, and if you have trouble finding it, Elizabeth will point you okay. to their, the right spot, so. Um, and then, um, otherwise, yeah, I was on legislative and superintendent evaluation, and you guys already covered that, so thank you. Okay. Mine have been covered. All right. Same here. All right. <laughs> Anything going on at the high school you want to share with us? Um, we have a student council meeting tomorrow morning, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um, if there's enough, no further committee reports, we'll move on then to recognitions and positive board feedback. And Megan, do you have anything you want to share? Um, I'm just excited to watch the sport teams playing in playoffs. I've been watching them online, mm -hmm. and I'm glad we have that service since they're not allowing a lot of fans at the games. So, and then good luck to our boys playing right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All the online stuff has been really cool to navigate also, but um, like it's great for grandparents and um, on a really snowy night, it's a nice option. And so I hope some of these things like that continue in future years too. So, Scott. Actually, mine was to uh, recognize all the, all the sports that are being played right now, basketball's tonight, hockey's tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, girls basketball won last night, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. We got six individual wrestlers moving on um, in their state stuff. And then, um, um, oh, the other one that I was going to talk about, uh, oh, um, choir. It's unfortunate that in the year that we've already had, that we had a snowstorm, so they had to cancel and uh, are making that up next week. So that'll be nice to see that they're in person and parents get to actually see their their, their kids perform, so. Yeah, mine was kind of the same thing as Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to highlight, um, is it Nicola De, De, De Jaeger? Um, isn't she going, she's going to nationals, I think, for the BPA competition, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. I saw yep. that on one of the, on one of the uh, screens earlier today, so that's mm -hmm. exciting for her. Um, and then I just wanted to, um, thank the district for celebrating World Down Syndrome Day, which uh, the district is celebrating tomorrow, uh, but specifically um, Mrs. Wolf, Mrs. Harris, uh, Mrs. Ingalls, Mrs. Hipper, um, Heather Harms, um, and everyone who's invited me to come and speak to uh, either the entire building or their classrooms and share this day. It's been kind of a fun um, couple days for me, so thank you. That's all. Um, I've got something a little different tonight. Um, 
as some of you might know, um, I spend a little time out at WIS every week helping fifth and sixth grade kids with math. Yep. And one of the classrooms that I go into, you just mentioned her, is uh, Laurie Harris's fifth grade math class. And they made this poster and gave it to me <laughs> and said, could you take this and show it to the rest of the board? <laughs> um, they gave it to me um, a couple weeks ago. We had National School Board Members yep. Week. So one morning when I came in, where I normally kind of sit down in the room before <laughs> class starts, this was there. And it just says, it says, high fives to our Wasika School Board. Thank you, Mrs. Harris's class and a bunch of the kids signed it and um, you can see there's a bunch of yeah that's signers. awesome that is so I neat that was really really nice that they took that yes. uh, initiative cute. to do that and, and was very appreciative and i said you bet i'll take it and show it to the rest of the board yeah. members and i'm sure they'll like it too so well, we should put it up in the boardroom at, <laughs> yeah. at the central building so but we, we will someday get back to boardrooms yes. <laughs> we're making we're well, hoping we to have get a reason to, yes yeah, absolutely <laughs> so that's awesome so yeah her, her class this morning was a really fun class to, to talk to so adita yeah i just you know I, Almost everything was said, but maybe just, you know, thank you to Mr. Hedevar and all the people who are behind the <laughs> scene that we really can go see our kids, maybe one or two people at a time. But I mean, online it's great, but yep. you know, the opportunity if you can to be there, it just, it's great. Thank mm -hmm. you. I told Joe earlier today that his job, I just, every day must just, he just must not know what to expect when he comes in every single day. So he's had a, he's had an interesting job this year. So, yeah. Uh, most of what I had was also said, um, I'll expand on what Julie said. I think it was Kyle Chen and Nicholas Jager both qualified for the BPA Nationals. And I think there was nine or so others that were also in the top 10. So, yeah. you know, another testament that our, we have some really good students really doing a lot of good stuff. So. Yep. Congratulations. Cool. Can I just say one other thing? Okay. I, so when I reached out um, to a couple different individuals on the clay shooting, mm -hmm. um, they were very impressed with our students that we actually had students coming forward to present to us this evening instead of just faculty members doing mm -hmm. it. And I, I just I think that's a, um, a testament to our students here in, in Waseca and the effort that they put in and, and what they want, mm -hmm. they actually put the effort in and, and come speak to us and, and share. You know, yes. and we've had students several times come and talk to us mm -hmm. and it's every mm -hmm. time they've come, they've, it's, it's, it's a great, great leadership skill. So, and, well, and I love having a student, students on our board as well. It's, it's, it's more often we can see them in front of, in front of us. It's, it's great. So yeah, but those, the boys did a great job tonight. All right, are you ready to move on to our action items? Um, can I get a motion to approve the gifts and donations? So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? Oh, thank you. Looks like we're working on getting a new gymnastics floor. <laughs> so. I think it's well needed. So thank yeah. You. yeah. yeah. So. But didn't they say that, was there enough actual room to put the regulation floor in there? I have no idea. So. I think it, it is might nice be to see questionable, though. but I don't think we can expand the room, so no, I think they're no, no. They have. It is just nice to see, though. <laughs> right. Generosity. Okay, so this is a resolution, so we're going to do a roll call vote. I'm actually going to remember it for once. So, <laughs> um, so when I call your name, just say um, yes or no. Uh, um, Scott. Yes. Katie. Yes. Julie is yes. Dave. Yes. Adida. Yes. And um, Grant. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimous um, and then we're just going to acknowledge that we received the vote of concurrence from the uh, American Indian Parent Advisory Committee earlier this evening and then can I get a motion to approve the updated band and choir trip plans so moved second first in a second any, any further discussion Megan are you planning on going on that trip Yes. All right. Very excited. Have you been to Branson before? Actually, yes. All right. <laughs> it's a cool place. It's really musical, so yeah, it's a good place to go. Good. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Or, I'm sorry, any opposed? <laughs> 
<laughs> motion carries unanimous. I'm getting hungry. Um, <laughs> can I get a motion to approve the transportation agreement with Minnesota Prairie um, for foster care? So moved. Second. First and second, any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve the proposed facility rental rates? So moved. Second. First and a second. Any discussion? Um, can I just ask, Eric, yeah. um, are we pretty much in the ballpark with these yeah, rental very, rates? Yeah, very much in line. Okay. Yeah. And really, these are very minimal increases, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Right. Historically, it appears we've done a nice job of just yep. gradually um, increasing as we need to without having to have a big jump for our community. So yep. that's a good thing. All right. If there's no further discussion, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve the proposed community education hourly pay rates? So moved. moved. Second. <laughs> First and a second. Um, any discussion? And these are effective June 1st? I suppose because for summer. Summer workers, gotcha. yes. All right. All right, if there's no further discussion, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve the general fund transfer to community education fund? So moved. Second. All right. A person a second. Um, any discussion? I, I have a question. Yep. If somebody can explain or tell me, you know, what caused the deficit for the, the Performing Art Center Fund balance? I mean, is it because we didn't have activities or what was the reason? I, I can speak to that if, if that's okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so really what it is, at this point in time, we haven't had a lot of activity in the Performing Arts Center, but we do have a Performing Arts Center manager that helps us during board meetings. Um, this is a, a, we would not transfer anything that, we would only transfer the actual amount. So right now we anticipated that there might be one performance at the end of the year that we might bring an outside vendor in. Um, more likely than not, it's probably going to be more around, say, the $9,000 or $8,000 level, just because of the Performing Arts Center manager being there helping with choir concerts, with drama, with our school board meeting. Um, we, we don't want that financial burden to be in community education that really is a general fund expenditure. So that's the, re the reason for the request of, of moving funds. Thank you. So does that mean that the Performing Arts Center budget is generally falls under the community education mm -hmm. section, not the general? I, I apologize, Grant. What was the question? Sorry. Was the Performing Arts Center typically fall under the community education area, mm -hmm. not the general? Um, it, it, it blends. Um, so the intent of the Performing Arts Center was to ha be able to use it for um, acts that we might bring in as a community education type of proposal, as we did right away at the beginning. Uh, we just haven't been able to get back to that just yet, so. Okay, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve the final 2020-2021 budget? I'll make a motion to approve the final 2020-2021 budget. Second. First and a second. Any discussion? Or any additional questions for Elizabeth? No. Nope. Does a great job with it. Yeah. It's a huge yes. budget. Yes. Yeah. All right. Hearing none, then we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve the disposal? The disposal proposal regarding trophies. So moved. Second. First and a second. Uh, any discussion? I was just going to say, because I'm on the um, Historical Society board, that thanks to the school for, um, I guess it looks like the Historical Society having the first chance to keep some of these trophies. If 
if uh, it'll work. So appreciate that. Honestly, I can't believe we've been storing them <laughs> this long <laughs> and that they were stored during construction and all that stuff too. So uh, yeah, I'm surprised this didn't come to us before. <laughs> well, um, it'll be up to the staff down there to decide if yep. we want some and which ones we want and all that, but yep. appreciate the opportunity. I mean, do you have like the date range that you will dispose, or did I miss um, it? It was like from the 1970s. Okay, oh, um, I missed it. So, <laughs> okay, um, and and then they, if, if you click on the link, they explain that the the new the Minnesota State or our new conference that we're in, you just instead of getting a trophy for each um, championship or, or whatever, um, they just add a plaque to. Okay, yeah. So it's just, so it takes up a lot less space. So. And I think the a lot of the ones that are included in this were the South Central Conference, yeah. which is not what we are anymore. Yeah, right. that's all of them. So if you all okay. you ever wanted to be on a, a championship high school team but never were able to, now is your chance. <laughs> you can get the trophy. Yeah. I will say it was cool to look back and see all the the years of championships mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean that is that's really neat. There's some really um, yeah. really successful programs throughout the years. So. Um, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to approve the reviewed policies? So move. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? Um, and these are policies 710, 711, 712, 713, 714. 720, 801, and 805, and reviewed policies only need one reading because they do not have significant changes. So thank you to the policy committee for um, taking the time to go through those. All right, if there's no further discussion, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, unanimous. And then we'll acknowledge the first reading of a revised policy. This is policy 802. And so we'll have the second reading next month. And then can I get a motion to approve revised policies 707 and 708? I'll make a motion to approve the revised policies. Second. Uh, first and a second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. All right, so that ends our action items. Um, upcoming items and reminders. Um, so I don't know if anyone can remember why, but um, at our organizational meeting, we chose our April meetings to be April 8th and April 22nd instead of April 1st and April 15th. And we can certainly just leave them that way. Um, April 1st would be um, a religious holiday, so that might be the reason why we moved it or it's religious day, I guess I should say. It's not really a holiday, but yes. Um, so we can leave it or um, I can go back and review the, <laughs> the meeting to see why we changed it. But um, does anyone have an opinion either way? So well, are we gonna accidentally show up on the first and third Thursdays versus the second and fourth Thursdays? That's what I'm worried about. I'm gonna show up on the wrong day. <laughs> but, At least you'll be a week early and not a week well, later. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, it'll just be me sitting here wondering where you guys all are. <laughs> Um, uh, Eric does have a conflict on the eighth, so but um, yeah, can, but I can oh, I can make it work to whatever you know meets the board's needs. Okay. Just, if you have a conflict, I'm fine with moving it. Yeah, I mean normally it would be the first and third anyway, so yeah. it, just moving it to where it really should be. Okay, I might go back and just review um, that our organizational meeting just the um, just to see, and then we'll just update everyone by email if sure. so no one has an opinion one way or the other on which meetings so okay. and I don't recall discussion at the meeting about it I remember I don't it think being so on the list and we just kind of moved through it so yeah, yeah. We'll, but we can review I just like I said I just caught that about three o'clock this afternoon looking at my calendar so all right so I will go back and review and then we'll just discuss okay. or I'll share information on uh, email and then we'll alert the public on if we change those the if we change the dates so um, any other Reminders, I can't really think of anything else. So. Are we doing Life to Journey on the, on the first then? Uh, I think we talked about doing that in May. May, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't I think we've talked about it, sure but I'm happy with it. was April or May. Yeah. yeah, so it'll probably, we'll probably finish up our life journey in 
I mean, unofficially finish up, but yes, <laughs> you guys can continue life journeys without us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we'll, we'll save that for me. Um, all right, if there's nothing else then, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you guys.